What is going on everyone? Tutorial Tim here, Design Academy, and today we're going to be talking about how to build out components. And it's going to be real simple. We're going to start off by, in this file, going to our team library. You can hold down option three and turning on that library. The library you're going to want to access is labeled as Material Design System. Ignore the one that is enabled above, labeled Material Design. We want the Material Design System. And I'm just going to turn that off so you do not get confused. So now that we have this library enabled, we'll have Material Design System Library enabled to access in our Assets panel. And the first thing we're going to see is um, you can go ahead and click on the documentation here. This is a link in Figma. So you can go ahead and open up the, the component page on Material Design's website to understand what this component actually does. There's a lot of in-depth information here that I totally recommend you consuming as this will only benefit you as a designer. And you'll notice that we have this interactive floating action button that we're actually going to be building out ourselves. There's a default version and there's a mini version set to 40 dips, the default set to 56 dips, and it's 56 dips in width and height, as well as the mini one set to 40 dips in width and height as well. And then we have an extended uh, variant of this floating action button that either comes with or without an icon. And we're gonna be creating the majority of these components today. And what I did was I grabbed these screenshots from the specs, and this tells you actually how to construct these in Figma, and we'll turn them into main components to then publish into our library. And it talks about placement. And again, this is really important because this will definitely teach you how to differentiate certain types of buttons as we create several types of buttons. And this is only one set of those buttons. These are a floating action button. And as you can see, there are variants of this. We have one, two, the leading and text variant. And then we have two variants of the regular floating action button. So we have a total of four variants there. And now you can, you can view this as you wish to refer to. And we're gonna go ahead and check our Figma file. And I have this exercise file set up with the screenshots for us to reference. And the first thing we're gonna need now that we've enabled our library is the icon. So that is a plus icon. So if I type in plus, um, maybe we can just click on that and continue to search for that icon. And if it's not appearing in your assets panel, you could also just extend all of the icons here and you can search by category as well. If this is just too overwhelming for you, you'll notice that I'm solely showing you this um, to showcase the functionality. And again, we can keep searching through this if we want, but again, this is actually very tedious and not good for our design process. So the best way to go about this is uh, directly going to the file where all these components live. So you can go ahead and drag any of those components into your canvas. And if you drag that in, you could then go click on go to main component and that'll take you directly to where those master components live. And since all of our components live in the same location, we're going to go ahead and search for it ourselves. This, we're going to look for that plus icon and it should live under our action category. I know even here it may be difficult to parse and find. So I'm going to pause and look for this real quick. Since I can't find this icon, it's actually not in our library. And again, this is um, our library where I intentionally didn't put all the icons here, although over time I will. And I did that because I actually want us to utilize the icon tool. So I'm gonna type in online on the internet material design icons tool. And basically this tool is a resource to download specific icons that we need. And we can also search for categories like I had discussed in the previous video. And we could either look for it by scrolling through, although that may be difficult, or I can filter it by the name and I can just type in plus. And you'll notice that under the actions category, these are all the plus variants of the icon. So I kept, I typed in plus and what I was actually looking for was the add icon. So if I, I can double check by going back to my library and searching for add, and my icons, and you'll notice that it is there. It was just difficult for me to find as this is all very dense. Oh, there it is. Let me see. Sometimes you can get overwhelmed by that content. So I can go ahead and copy this and it's called content add. And I'll go ahead and search that as an example content. And if I type in slash add, it will even further compartmentalize that. And again, we're good to go. I can drag this onto the canvas. I now have the proper dimensions for this icon. I'm just double checking that 
The width and height of this icon is set to 24 by 24 uh, dips in this case. So uh, you see that that's specified here in the properties panel and all of these variants of the floating action button uh, use a width of 24 by 24 width and height of 24 dips um, here for the icon. And we're gonna go ahead and create the regular variant first. So what we're gonna do is now that we have this icon, I'm actually gonna hold down Option Command G to create a frame. And I'm going to label this buttons slash space slash space uh, floating action, whoops, action button regular. This is the regular variant of the floating action button and it lives under the category of buttons and under the category of floating action button and it is the regular variant. So that is important to note that we get that uh, naming convention set from the get-go. It'll make our lives a lot easier and you'll know what I mean when we start to publish these components to the library. Um, and okay, so now what I wanna do is hold on Option Command G, turn this into a frame again. Well, this is the frame. Um, and what I'm gonna do is hold down uh, shift option as I drag on the frame and s ensure that that's set to 56 by 56. And if not, if you don't wanna do it that way, this is much quicker. You can just set these to 56 by 56. You'll notice that the icon's set to top and left by default as I scale that out. What I'm gonna do is in the layers panel, click on that icon, hold down option V and then H, and that will center my icon perfectly as needed um, for my floating action button in order to create that. So now that I've created that, you'll notice that the spacing on the left and the right of the icon should be set to 16. So the padding should be set to 16 dips on the left and right, which it is on this frame. And it might be hard for you to see because by default that, that fill was off, turned off. And I'm holding down option to get these red line measurements. So you'll see that those specs are set properly and it is already vertically centered and horizontally centered as needed, the frame size is correct. And what I do need to do before I forget is ensure that the color of this icon is, I'm gonna turn off that fill in the icon and the selection color, which is the color applied to the icon here, needs to be set properly. So it needs to be set to content on primary. And you can't see it right now, but that's fine because we're going to specify the background color of this fill by clicking style, going to our content, and then we're going to select on, should be on background or on surface. Um, they're all the same color value. And again, if there's ever any confusion on what color to apply, uh, we can always reference the documentation here in, in material design. Um, to understand the behavior better and get clues or hints on how to better construct these elements. But uh, now that I know what that is, I'm going to ensure that this uh, component has rounded corners. So I'm going to change the corner radius here and round that out. You'll notice that it, it's now rounded out when I set this to 32 dips, um, 32 on the corner radius. I now have my rounded circle and we have the uh, desired colors applied. And with this icon implemented as well, I the last thing I need to do is add an effect style to this button. And remember when we worked on elevation and I created a diagram of the elevation, one thing we can do is reference documentation again and go to elevation on the material design website. If we go to our components or if we go to design and we select the environment and select elevation and we go to elevation hierarchy or whoops let's let's see default depicting elevation i'm trying to find the good example of elevation and where it lies on a floating action button so a floating action button let's find the example here okay so here we have it it's right here so you see this floating action button right here the floating action button lies on when it's, it raises to 12 dips in elevation, and you'll notice that it lives in between four and eight dips on this axis here, and it lives on the six dips 
on the Y axis. So that's where the floating action button is at by default. So if we go ahead and actually go to our styles, go to effects and apply the six dip, which is, it's already labeled too in our color system in the description, which is awesome. We have now created our floating, our regular floating action button. And once you've created the desired component as needed, we can go ahead and turn this into a main component and you can either click the create component in the toolbar right there in the center, but the I always use the shortcut key to create a main component and that's option command K. If you pay attention to your layers panel, once I hit that shortcut key, I will now have a main component. So that is awesome. And what we need now is a mini floating action button, which is the which is what FAB stands for. And all we actually have to do is we can go ahead and duplicate this because essentially what this is, is a smaller version of the regular. It's just shrink, shrunk down. And what we are going to need to do is detach this element. I'm gonna do option command B. I've now detached that and it's a regular frame. Or you can right click and click detach instance, which detaches it from the main component. And what we'll need to do is now specify the spacing and tighten it. So you'll notice that the padding all around is set to 16 dips. And all you have to do is set the height and width of this to 40 dips here, as specified in the specs. I can go ahead and hit this constrain proportions, type in 40, and it will do that. And what I can do is select the icon, and hit option V and then option H. I just hold down option, then hit V, then H. And then they will automatically center that uh, in the within the parent frame. So everything is now set to eight dips on the top, left, bottom, and right, uh, specified here. And we're good to go. The only thing we need to do is actually go ahead and rename this, and we're gonna call it the mini fab instead of regular. So we don't have to change the naming convention to the left of this layer, just the rightmost uh, portion of it, which is regular. So change that to mini FAB. Uh, you can, once you've done that, you can turn this into a master component, right click, create component, or main component, I apologize. Um, and now we have those two variants. Great, we're good to go. And the next step is we're going to need to create another button and it's an extended floating action button. And this is our last element that we'll need to create here. And with this created, um, we're gonna go ahead and reference this mini button. I'm gonna duplicate this button and I'm gonna detach it, detach this instance. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the naming convention and it's a long one. So I'm gonna type in extended FAB, so extended floating action button. Now that we have that name properly, I'm going to go ahead and ensure that we specify the parent frame. We're gonna utilize the parent frame to set the parameters of the button. So all I did was I grabbed the right edge, held down command and stretched out this element. And I need to make sure that I have my constraints set properly. Maybe I want my constraints to center on the Y axis. So if I didn't center this, it's set to top and left on constraints, this would just stick there. And I don't want that because I need to set this height to 48 and I still need this icon to be aligned centered vertically. I could just apply that property, go ahead and change the height to 48 and that stays centered. You'll notice that it's 12, set to 12 pixels on the top and bottom proportionately. And you can see how powerful utilizing the principles material design is specified. Uh, things will always be divisible by four or eight. And now that I have that height specified, I need to set this spacing to 12 instead of eight on the left. So uh, now I have that set to 12. So that spacing is now proportionate. And I actually need to create some text. And we have the color style already because we enabled our library for the button color style. And I'm going to specify, I'm gonna create some text here, hit T on my keyboard to create the text tool. And I'm gonna type in create, and I'm gonna ensure that I have the content color style set properly. So I have content on primary. So on primary, he'll notice that it's using the Roboto mono, so it does not look like this text style yet, but we need to apply the style. So with that text selected, I can click on the text styles icon and then go ahead and select button and I now have create set. And with that created, I can go ahead and, uh, one, sorry, one sec, once that's specified, I can go ahead and
ahead and specify what I'm going to need to do with this color style is ensure that I'm holding down command and grabbing the, the edge of this text here. And I can go ahead and center this. So option V to vertically center this. My spacing set to 12 here and I need the spacing on the right to be set to 20 because that are, that is what's specified. The text is centered as it's pointing here. Uh, through The content being the icon and the text is centered in this floating action button that is extended. And I've now centered that here. And we need to set the spacing to 20 here. So I can go ahead and click on this. I can hold down option here, which will allow me to see the spacing. And I can hold down command and push this to the left to see if I'm getting the right spacing. I was off by one pixel. So now it's set to 20 there. And I have now created the extended floating action button with all the proper properties. So we can go ahead and double check that by uh, just pulling this next to it. And what we can see is that we have the icon set to 24 by 24 dips as specified here. Spacing set to the 12 on the left and right of the left of the edge of the button and the right of the text. And it's vertically centered. And the height of the button itself is set to 48 dips. And the text has padding to the left set to 12 and spacing padding to the right set to 20 dips. And we are good to go. That is our floating button, floating action, uh, Floating, extended floating action button, sorry. Uh, a lot of words there going on, confusing myself. So I'm gonna create that as a main component. And one thing you'll notice is that if I type into this component, uh, I don't have essentially what I need, which is auto layout, because it will automatically adapt what I type and implement the proper spacing as needed as I type. So what we're gonna do is turn this into an auto layout component in the next section of the course where we'll go over specifically auto layout uh, for implementing these components, um, which needs to be covered separately, I believe, because it's a lot of content to consume and understanding uh, providing the nomenclature here for this component by layering it accordingly, naming it in the layers panel accordingly, and then also utilizing the tips and tricks to create the components themselves. It may take some time, so we're going to specifically focus on that and constraints um, as needed. So I'm going to actually center this and ensure that this sticks to the left and right. But again, remember that when we finalize publishing these components, we're gonna use auto layout and we won't be using these constraints. We're solely using constraints for the practice of understanding constraints, which you'll be masters at once we build out all these components um, interactively together. So that is all I have. The last thing is organizing and publishing this. So, so now that we have all of this organized and published, um, well, now we need to organize it since we have these main components. So what we can do is with this regular floating action button here, we can go ahead and specify that, make sure it's aligned accordingly. Um, we can change, excuse me, the spacing as needed. Whoops. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over here. We've got that set to 16. Spacing between the types is set to 72. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this one last button here and change this, make sure that's set to 16. And we now have our three button variants here for the floating action buttons as directed here from the specs specified on the Material Design website. So that is what we just created. And you can go ahead and read the contents of this web page, which is accessible in our exercise file right here at the bottom. You just click on that link, select open link, and it'll open that page for you, and you'll be good to go. And again, I'm going to keep this here, short and sweet. Thank you so much for watching. In the other videos, you'll notice that we'll actually publish these in the re to our material design system file as a whole, but I'm gonna save that for the end so we can do that all together in one go. So that way you're not, your head's not context switching between the types, the two separate processes, which is building out these components and then organizing and publishing the components. So that's all I have for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.